Ciao pandas, I'm Jose Marti, Spanish polyglot and founder of polyglotpanda.com, a website that will help you to improve your Spanish once for all. If you're new to this channel, I welcome you to the panda community. In each one of my videos, I ask you all a question so you can practice your Spanish on the comment section. I check every single comment and I give you corrections and tips, so feel free to join us down below. Today's question is ¿Has estado alguna vez en España? ¿Qué es lo que más te gustó del viaje? Remember to always start your answer with the panda emoji that you will find on the description of this video. And now let's talk about masculine and feminine in Spanish. Gender is a grammatical property inherent to the nouns. According to their gender, in Spanish the nouns are masculine or feminine. There are no neutral nouns, but careful, because there is a neutral article, lo, although it can only be used with adjectives, lo amarillo, te sienta bien, and adverbs, me impresiona lo lejos que has llegado. So that makes things very easy. You can only speak about masculine things like el coche or feminine things like la casa. And you don't have to worry about the neutral article because it is wrong to say lo coche or lo casa. Simple as that. Now, the fundamental property of the gender is to mark the agreement between the noun and the rest of the words with which it is combined. In the dictionary, you will find the abbreviations M for masculine nouns and F for feminine nouns. If you don't know any trustful dictionary, try RAE, Real Academia Española de la Lengua, Spanish official royal institution. You can go to RAE.es and check any word you want to know the gender. For you to fully understand the gender in Spanish, you must know a little bit about where it comes from. There were three genders in Latin, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Roman's language lost the neutral gender, except for the pronouns lo, eso, esto, and the articles lo. That's why all Spanish nouns are either masculine or feminine. The gender of Latin nouns was not necessarily linked to the ending. In other words, there were male and female names in all declensions. However, the feminine ones predominated among those ending in A, A, like patria, patriae, which means fatherland, and the masculine one among those ending in us, like amicus, amici, which means friend. Spanish generalized by analogy this predominance and tended to make feminine or masculine the nouns as they will end in A, or us, respectively. So, uh, well, there are some exceptions, like el día or la mano, but we'll talk about gender exceptions later in this video, so don't worry. One of the most frequently asked questions is whether there are gender rules in Spanish. Well, just like English, Spanish language too has grammatical rules, so Spanish is definitely a gender-sensitive language and you must be careful about those gender rules to speak Spanish flawlessly. With a little effort, you will be able to master these rules. Now, you must be aware that making a gender mistake when trying to speak Spanish is not considered as a huge mistake. We Spaniards are quite conscious about how difficult it is for you to talk about a table as if it was a female table or to talk about a male book. But although we can understand it perfectly even if you say el mesa or la libro, it sounds really painful to the Spanish ear. So the sooner you get used to the gender, the better conversations you will be able to have. To begin with, Always remember that all nouns have gender in Spanish. Every single noun in Spanish begins with a specific article that essentially denotes the gender. They can be definite or indefinite. In this video, we're going to focus only on the definite articles. Okay, ready? Let's go! If a noun is singular masculine, it starts with el. For example, el niño, the boy. If a noun is singular feminine, it starts with la, for example, la niña, the girl. 
If a noun is masculine plural, it starts with los. For example, los niños, the boys. If a noun is feminine plural, it starts with las. For example, las niñas, the girls. So with these simple rules, you can speak with confidence knowing that you won't be mistaken. Just look for the gender on the dictionary and add the correct article. As simple as that. Now, how do you remember the gender of so many words? By repetition. Period. Repeat and talk and write and speak and repeat and you will recognize the gender in no time, but you have to work on it. For a beginner who's learning Spanish, it is natural to wonder if numbers have genders in Spanish. Numbers are mostly masculine in Spanish. Henceforth, they begin with the article EL. El uno means number one. El dos means number two. El tres means number three. And so on and on. Dates are also masculine in Spanish. El cinco de mayo, el trece de agosto, el once de septiembre, and so on. You get the idea. The gender of colors depends in the first place, on how the word works in the context. If the color is used as a noun, it will always have a masculine gender. El azul, el rosa, el gris, el naranja. El verde es mi color favorito. In cases where the word that designates the color is used as an adjective, if it has two endings, like rojo, roja, amarillo, amarilla, its gender is subject to the gender of the noun they qualify. Ana se compró una falda amarilla. Ana se compró un coche amarillo. If it has just one ending, like verde, because you don't have verde, verda, it does not change. El reloj de Javier es verde. La camisa de Javier es verde. When the color is modified by an adjective, both words will appear in masculine since the noun is still the word color and color is masculine in Spanish. La moto rojo oscuro es la de mi hermana. El pantalón de su traje es negro claro. There definitely exist some gender exceptions in Spanish. Well, not some. A lot. While we have learned that nouns ending in O are masculine, like libro, there are some nouns that are feminine and yet they end at O. Here are some examples. La foto, la mano, la moto, la radio. Similarly, there are several exceptions with words ending in A that are masculine. El aroma, el carisma, el clima, el cometa, el cura, el día, el dilema, el diploma, el enigma, el fantasma, el idioma, el mapa, el mediodía, el papa, el pijama, el planeta, el poema, el problema, el programa, el sistema, el sofá, el tema. Sometimes it is said that Spanish is a sexist language because when there is a mixed group, like chicos y chicas, hombres y mujeres, niños y niñas, the masculine plural is used to encompass both male and female gender. So just by saying chicos, you might be referring to chicos and chicas. The explanation is very simple. In Spanish, when there is a mixed group of men and women, the plural masculine encompasses everyone, men and women. For example, when I say mis padres no están en casa, I mean mi padre y mi madre. Nowadays, new technologies have transformed the way of writing. The use of symbols such as at, arroba, 
can try to avoid sexist forms. It is common in the current times to use chicos, todos or niños to encompass both male and female and try not to be so um, sexist. Well, that's all the information you need. Are you ready to practice the gender in Spanish? On our website you can find a worksheet to practice all this information and make sure you have understand it perfectly. It's free and it's for you. I leave a comment to the worksheet on the big description. That's all for now. If you want to keep improving your Spanish daily, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want thousands of free resources to help boost your Spanish, check our website www.polyglobepanda.com. See you soon. Ciao, pandas!